Hi, welcome to the Brain Injury Answers Podcast. This is Dr. David Glazer providing the answers you need when a brain injury occurs. This podcast is for educational purposes only. For treatment, please consult your physician. This podcast does not represent the Department of Veterans Affairs. All right, let's get started. Question. My loved one had a brain injury. Why does their bladder and bowel not work so well since sustaining this brain injury? Answer. This is a great question. People often fail to remember that the brain controls the entire body. All body parts are controlled by the brain. The brain is the epicenter of lots of connections which go through the spinal cord and onto peripheral nerves to control all parts of the body. It's almost like a highway with many entrances and exit ramps to help nerve signals, thoughts and actions get processed and go to the proper area. Therefore, after a brain injury, the areas of the brain could be affected, which then can cause incontinence or retention of the bladder and or the bowels. First off, the specific area of the brain that controls one's bladder or bowel could be directly affected. Another reason could be that those areas of the brains that control the bowel and bladder might be intact and healthy, but someone has to have the control on their own to recognize when to release their bladder and bowels at the proper time. But if a person's awareness and understanding and emotions are not working properly, this can cause incontinence. If someone had issues with their bladder or bowel before the accident, likely many of these issues are still there. For example, someone with an enlarged prostate might continue to have urinary challenges. Someone who had incontinence maybe due to poor musculature before the injury is likely to still have that same issue. So, therefore, indirectly, the brain injury did not necessarily make it worse, just that the issue that was around prior to the injury is still around after the injury. With a brain injury comes many surgeries, medication changes, and pain medications. So these medicines can affect how the bladder and bowel function. Oftentimes anesthesia and opioids, also known as narcotic pain medications, in a certain sense numb the nerves and slow down the functioning of these nerves which allow for the release of urine or stool. There are also something called urodynamic studies which can help to detect what aspect of a bladder might not be working. What's often done is a, in a urodynamic study is that fluid is inserted through the urethra into the bladder and 
one can see at what level of volume of fluid does the bladder respond to wanting to push that fluid out. It could be that the bladder does not respond or it could be that it responds at very small levels of fluid when the bladder should be holding more fluid. Sometimes for management of these bowel and bladder issues, a patient might have an internal catheter placed, also known as a Foley catheter, or there could be an external catheter placed on men due to the anatomy that is different between men and women. Women cannot have an external catheter placed. Diapers could be used as well to help manage. In addition, an intermittent catheterization program could be started. Essentially what this means is that the bladder would be drained at certain intervals throughout the day. Generally maybe every four hours or every six hours depending on how much fluid a patient accumulates in their bladder. Because if fluid is not getting passed out that fluid can back up into the ureters and the kidney and cause many other issues, almost like a pipe that's clawed and gets backed up. One should also check to see if maybe there's just a urine infection because a urine infection can cause various urinary issues and that could be treated with an antibiotic. In addition, one wants to make sure the skin is kept clean in any incontinent episodes because urine in stool can break the skin down further, causing wounds and irritation, which could affect a patient's ability to focus in therapies and affect any levels of agitation a patient might have. Switching to the rear side, no pun intended, in stool issues such as constipation, again, this is often caused from poor diets or from a number of pain medications that could be used which slow the bowels from propulsion and propulsing the stool out of the body. One can use stool softeners such as docusate or propulsion type medicines such as senna to help the bowels. If bowels are too loose one should consider increasing fiber and vegetables in their diet. One can consider using a suppository say nightly Place a suppository and about a half hour later hop on the toilet and evacuate your bowels to help set up some sort of bowel program. There are also various drinks such as Miralax which is um, generically known as polyethylene glycol or magnesium citrate which can be drank and then it helps flush the GI, gastrointestinal, and or digestive system out. Again, one wants to make sure that the skin stays clean and dry and healthy. In addition, while going through all the various therapies, one should consider something such as time voiding where a person who has sustained a brain injury can be placed on a toilet every two hours throughout the day 
to help retrain the bowels and the bladder on using the restroom and being vertical, which often the gravity helps get urine and stool out of the system. So as one can see, there are a variety of factors that can affect the bladder and the bowel after a brain injury. But one does not have to fear. There are many ways to help overcome these challenges for one's bladder and bowel to be properly evacuated so one can remain healthy, clean, and dry to focus on all the other important therapies and care that one receives after sustaining a brain injury. That's a wrap for today. Remember to email all your questions to braininjuryanswers at gmail.com. Check out the website www.braininjuryanswers.com. Thanks for listening.